Hi and welcome back. So in the last video we saw how you can create landing pages in MailChimp and if you want to create landing pages then it is a very simple process. You just create a template. It's just like creating an email template and then you'll share the link with your subscribers or you can share it on your social media accounts. You can even market the link the same way you'd market any other link and these landing pages are currently being hosted on MailChimp so you won't be able to embed them anywhere as of the moment. So in this video we are going to go into lists and I want to create a pop-up. I saw that there is an interface change in the area for creating pop-ups. So let me go into lists. I have lots of lists mostly because I use most of them for demonstrations for you. If I want to join lists, let's say for instance I want to combine this list with another one. I'll just click on it and then click on combine list and then I can choose the list that I want to combine it with. Okay, let's say I want to combine it with uh, this one. I'll click next and then you'll type confirm to combine the list and that's going to combine these two lists. So any list that is in the first list is going to go into the second list. Okay, so I can see that uh, since I sent an email to the first list, I won't be able to join this list because I've just sent a campaign to these people. Maybe there are certain activities that need to be tracked. So I won't be able to join them. But if I hadn't sent the campaign and I sent this campaign in the second last video, the last video I did a landing page, the video before that I did a campaigns, how to send Belgium campaigns and I sent a campaign there. So that's why I'm not able to join. Before you join the list, don't send campaigns for at least seven days so that you can you can combine two lists. Okay. So the thing that I wanted to do in this video is is create a pop-up form and we are going to use this sample list for us. If you want to create a form, embedded form, pop-up, it always has to begin from a list. So which list do you want to create the form for? So in my case, I want to create a form for this list. So we have different forms. We have general forms. These are the forms that you'll just share the link on MailChimp and people will be able to click on the link, go to MailChimp and sign up. Those are general forms. And then you have embedded forms. These are forms that you'll take the code and then embed it on your website. If you're using WordPress, you can just take the code, embed it directly on a page, or you can embed it on a widget using the HTML code widget. And if you're using any other website such as Squarespace, Shopify, you can just take this code the way it is, add it in your page template, and then the form is going to show up. And then we also have the subscriber pop-ups. So these are the ones that they're just like these ones, but they are pop-up forms. And then you have form integrations. These are, if you have integrations based on one of the MailChimp integrations, you can use this. But in most cases, you're going to find that uh, you're only using the subscriber pop-up or the embedded pop-ups because most people prefer to embed the forms on their sites. But if you don't have a website, you can create a general form and then you'll just click the link of the general form. You'll just copy the link of the general form and share it on Facebook, Twitter or wherever you want to share it. So let's go into subscriber pop-up because you want to create a pop-up and just see what's different under pop-ups. This is a default pop-up and you can use the settings on this side to make sure that you get the right pop-up that you want. For instance, you can have a model, you can have a slide in. I can see they've added this slide in. So you see the way it slides in. You can also have the fixed one, the fixed form. So it will be fixed on your page, like on your site's web page. So in most cases, you'll, you'll probably prefer either the model or the slide in. So let's say I choose the slide in because we know how the model works. This is the one which just pops up. Okay. Let's choose the slide in. And then you can say the display settings. When do I want to see this? After certain seconds or immediately? Yeah, in most cases, you want to delay it. Okay. So you can also see that they've added all these elements that allows you, allows the form to show up once people scroll. So if you choose this, once somebody scrolls halfway on your page, this form is going to show up. If you choose scroll to bottom of page, as soon as they reach the bottom, 
this form is going to show up for them. So on exit, so you can also create exit intent pop-ups here. So if somebody tries to exit, maybe they go on this side, try to close the button or this side, they try to close it. Then you're going to get an exit intent. So you can create exit intents. You can create one that scrolls to the middle and you can just create a normal one that shows up after a certain delay of time, like 20 seconds, five seconds. So down here, you can change the design of the field. So let me see for the model. Yeah, so for the model, it's the same thing. You just choose the type of the form and then you choose how the display will be, how it will get displayed. Is it displayed when somebody tries to exit, somebody scrolls to the bottom of the page or somebody scrolls to the middle or is it being shown immediately after 20 seconds is it being shown immediately or after a delay of 20 seconds? I think it would really be great if there was some kind of custom uh, time here so that you can choose after how long it can be it can be shown. But if you want to do things like that, you can use MailMunch. MailMunch has a bunch of other features that will enable you to use different pop-ups. And then the image alignment. Okay, so this is this image up here. So it depends. Do you want a form whereby the image is on this side and the form is on this side? Something like that. Or do you want one where the image is on that side and the form is on this side? Or do you want one without the image? I personally usually prefer this. Very simple. And then you can change the font. You can change the text color. You can change the subscribe call to action there. Maybe you're giving a download. So you can say download and then you change the button styles, the background of the button. And of course you can change the alignment if you want it at the center or you want it to be full width like that. Of course, this is more preferable. Use the full width. And Let's say these are all. So let's just come back here and say we want one with an image, right? Because most people love images, yeah? So you can add an image. If you have one that you want to upload, click here, upload your image. Or you can use one which is already here. Let me use this one. And then insert. There you go. So you can add your image up there. And of course, you have to note that these images won't appear the same way like this. Like for instance, if I choose this one, you see the image perspective gets altered. Okay, so you have to know how you want yours to appear when you're creating your images so that when you come here, you create a vertical image. If you want to use this vertical alignment or you want to create, you want to use a horizontal image that use the horizontal alignment. So just know the one that you want. Okay, so that you don't have images that don't make sense like this. Okay, it, it could be okay, but it depends on the message that you want to send to your subscribers. In my case, I can use that. That's it for this part. And then you can go into field. Then you can add, you can add different fields. Like if you want a first name and a last name, and in most cases, you know, that the more fields you have, the less subscribers you're going to get. So you can just disable one of these or you can disable both and just collect emails. That's what's important, the email. You can also have this, but make, make them not required. If you do that, it will be required. This one is required by default. You can't change it. This one is always there. So I will uncheck that. And then content. Now. This is the content for your pop-up edit. So you can edit your image if you want to edit it. I don't want to edit mine. You can write anything that you want to write here to encourage people like. So you can write whatever you want to write here to get people to sign up, download. So once you're done, you see here, you can view the code, embed the code anywhere. And your pop-up is going to show up and except for 
for WordPress. WordPress, if you download, if you add this pop-up, there is a slight, there is a 95% chance it's not going to work. So most cases with WordPress, just use a plugin or use MailMunch. MailMunch will save you a lot of hassle. And I don't even use the MailMunch plugin. I just go in the same way I'm editing this. I just go in there. I get the code from MailMunch. Then I embed that after connecting it with MailChimp. I have a video on how to do that. I have a, a couple of videos on how to do that. And here's the link for these videos. If you come here, you can publish your form. You're about to save and publish the changes to your subscriber pop-up form. So once I publish this, I will be able to take the code and put it on any any website. Any non-web WordPress website is going to work fine. Okay. For WordPress, WordPress has uh, uh, some kind of conflict with uh, with the Mailchimp code, so it won't work out of the box. There are certain things you'll need to do, but it's just much easier for you to to use MailMunch. So if I view the code, let me come here and copy the code. Control A, Control C. So view code down here will give you that option. And I have this. Let me just open this. So there's this web page. And we created this. If you watch the HTML and CSS tutorial, we created this and uh, for HTML and CSS tutorial for beginners, we saw how we can create this. I will add the code on this page so that we can see how it shows up on this HTML page. So if I come here, I can open this using Notepad and I can add the code down here. If I add that and then I save control S to save and then I come and I reload the page. So I can see it's not showing up because I'm on the local computer. And since I am on the local computer, this file is not uploaded on any server. Since I'm on my local computer, I will need to come back here and add something. And what I need to add is here. You see these things about HTTP. So I just need to add this. If this was on a web server, then I wouldn't need to add any of this. But since I'm on my local computer, I'm going to have to add. I'm going to have to add them so that my browser can know which protocol to use. So if I paste that in there. Control Z. Paste it. Paste it in there. I think I'm going to have to move this into my local web server. I don't know which one I have installed. So after restarting the services, let me see. There we go. We have WAMP installed. So what I will do, I will move. I will move this folder into my WAMP server so that at least we can see an example of the MailChimp working. So my WAMP server is located here. Local disk uh, WAMP64 and uh, I need to put them inside of the WW folder. So control V and let me just rename it to something that is simple to remember like just number one so if i come to my WAMP server localhost slash one So you see it shows up after we delay and if you close this it's not going to show up again for i don't know how long so if you close the pop-up it's not going to show up probably for another 48 hours for the same user i'm not sure about that but that's what will happen so if somebody closes that 
they're not going to see this pop up again even if they reload the page. So that's how you create MailChimp pop ups. Okay, so if you are on Squarespace, you can add the code. If you go to what's it called advanced settings, then under code injection, you can go to the footer, to the footer section, and then you paste in this code. And every time somebody comes to your website on any page, they're going to see the pop up. Okay, so the good thing the most advanced change I can see here is that at least now you can have different types of pop-ups. The one that I was using is this one, which just slid in. You saw how it slid into the page. So you can also have the model and the model is just one whereby it just pops up. Okay. And with the model, you have the overlay opacity whereby you can change the opacity of the opacity of the form. So if maybe I put it at 30, it will make it such that the background of my web page will still somewhat be visible. If I don't want the back page, the website to be visible, I can make it overly, I can increase the opacity to 90 and you can see it changes that. So that's what the opacity is. That's for the model. And the slide in will just slide in. And then for the fixed, you can choose this if you want it to be fixed on the page. Okay. So it all depends on you. Just come here, create your pop up depending on the type of pop up that you want. And then you'll come here, view code, and select the code and paste it in your site. Okay. So if you're using WordPress, this is not going to, it's not going to work. Okay. And let's just do an example. Let me come here and I want to copy this. Control C. Then let me come into my WordPress. So I want to add it in a widget. And you know, in a widget, you can add it on your footer and the footer template of your theme. But let me just add it on a widget. Where is appearance? Then widgets. So I want to add it as a custom HTML widget. So I'll just drag that, paste in the code, and then save. And then let me see if I come into any page with a widget. So this is one that uh, I created with MailMunch. So MailMunch has a bunch of this. You can use different ones. So this is where I added the code and you can see it's not showing up on WordPress. So in most cases, you'll find that it doesn't work on your WordPress, but that shouldn't worry you. There are lots of plugins. You can use MailMunch or you can use any other plugin. There used to be a plugin here. So I can see last updated a year ago. That is not good. That is very bad. So you'll need to find another alternative because if a plugin hasn't been updated in over a year, it's probably on its way to dying. Okay. And that's never good. So as I've said, just use uh, MailMunch because MailMunch works best for me. I use MailMunch as well. A bunch of people use MailMunch. It's very easy to use. Has a lot, lots of different forms that you can use. So just use MailMunch. Okay, that's it for this video. And in this video, we have seen how you can create your subscriber pop-up. And we say that you have different pop-ups. You can have the model and then slide in. It will slide in. And then we have the fixed form. You can have one which is fixed on the bottom of your of your web page. So just go ahead and try them and see how each of them operate. And you can also say when they're displayed. What is the display mechanism? Mine, I chose display after 20 seconds. And then you can wait for people to scroll to the middle to show the page, scroll to the bottom to show the page, or you can show it on exit. So this is a, the so-called exit intent pop-up. That's it for this video. And if you have any questions, make sure you let me know. I will see you in the next one.